my grandmama May was a force to be reckoned with. She always said she had the good Lord behind her and Michael beside her, so let any old devil come test her that may. Well, little did she know, one eventually would, but little did that old devil know just who he was attesting. In the eastern part of the Tennessee mountains, where my family is originally from, way back in the old days, my great-grandparents lived so far back in the woods it seemed like the sunshine was just late getting to them always. Well, my grandmama May remembered it very well. Her and her big sister June was fine with it. They loved it there. Till their mama and daddy's old buggy went off a bridge, sadly, took both their lives. So there they was. My grandmama May was 14, and my great aunt June was 16. Well, I reckon they had a miserable time there for a while. Kinfolk lived not too far away, so they helped when they could. But they had to toughen up and grow up extra quick. They did everything together, though. And after a while, May noticed June would make an excuse for Grandma to stay home while she'd go into town or go pick berries and stuff like that. Well, it turned out, June was sneaking around and courting a feller just on the outskirts of town. His name was John, he was a good feller. And soon, June and John was to be married. Well, they wanted Grandma May to go live with them, back where he's originally from, South Carolina. But she wanted no part of that. So, June married John, and they left. May was heartbroken, lonely, and a little worried. But now, Grandma May, like I said, she was a force to be reckoned with. She always said, she had the good Lord behind her and Michael beside her. So let any old devil come test her that may. She always was kind of tomboyish anyhow. Well, after they left, she stormed back inside, and sat down in her daddy's old rocking chair and said, Welp, all right then. She slapped her hands on the arms of it, stood up, and went to work making that place the way she wanted it. See, because of her age, kinfolk would come around from every direction, either wanting her to come live with them or wanting the property. Well, they weren't thinking about May's attitude and that she still had her daddy's shotgun. Well, needless to say, they eventually left her be. See, one time she was out picking berries and an old coyote he eased up our tour, growling and showing his teeth. Says she looked at it and lowered her brow and said, Lordy mercy, I ain't got time for this now. So she rushed over and slapped it on the muzzle. Said it just kind of looked at her funny and turned around and took off. See, she lived that way till she got to be an old woman. But one day, when she was in her thirties, she was walking by a house heading to the grist mill. Well, she heard a man yelling and a woman crying. So she just turned her head and kept walking. She heard a woman holler out again and she stopped dead in her tracks. She dropped her sack and said old Mace didn't turn around. Marched right into the front door. So the man there standing there asked who in the world she was. So she just grinned said, could a handsome man like yourself loan a uh, lonely gal a skillet? So she kind of grinned at him, blinked her eyes at him. Well, said so he ordered the crying woman to go get one. 
So he kind of grinned back at her a little bit and everything. So he was kind of slicking his hair back. Said the woman coming in there drying her eyes and holding her face and handed May a skilly. So May said, thank you kindly. So she turned around and banged him right upside the noggin with it. Then handed it back to the lady and said, it cooks and straightens a man right out. In case you didn't know, wheeled around on her heels and took off. So she went up there and grabbed her sack, picked it up, took off a toting it. So she went around the curve there. So she heard some running, thought it was that man. So she stopped and turned around and there was that woman following her. Somebody asked, what in the world are you doing? She so said, well, I can't stay there, not after that. So when he comes to, it's going to get real bad for me. May said, well, I guess you better stay with me. He said, but you're going to have to keep up and pull your weight. Says she stayed with me for about two days and says she'd rather take her chances with her husband than stay and try to keep up with me. Well, when May was in her late 40s, an older couple, a man named Clark and his wife Susan, bought the land beside her and behind her and built them a new home right close to her. Real nice home at the time. Well, they stopped by to see me and introduce herself and stuff. Well, she didn't like them right off the bat. Snotty. It weren't long. Clark made a proposal just like she figured. He wanted to buy her land. Said she told him it weren't for sale. See, so Tori said, well, from what I'm reckoning, said, most of it, is on my property anyway. It's on my side. She said, no, sir, this land's been in my family for generations. He said, really? When was the last time it was surveyed? Well, naturally, she didn't know. Said he laughed and said, well, you may as well just go ahead and just sign it on over to me now or I'll just take it in court. Well, she told him where he could go, but it weren't court. <laughs> But it did worry her. And I mean, she got worried sick, boy. Said she reached out to kinfolk and neighbors and stuff. But none of them knew anything about when it was last surveyed or anything, neither. And none of them had the money to have it done or get a lawyer or anything. Nobody knows what to do. So all she knew to do was pray. But one evening, the more she thought about it, she sat out there on the front porch, just looking at their house. The more she thought about it, the matter she got. So she stopped the rocking chair, got up, and marched right over there to their house and walked right in. And there they sat at the supper table. So she said, well, looks like we got company. She said, looky here, Mr. Fancy Britches. You ain't a-taking my daddy's land, and you dang sure ain't buying it neither. He said, ma'am, it's rightfully mine anyway, so why don't you just make your little money? Go find you some poor sap in the city. May be desperate enough to marry a woman like you. Said he started chuckling. Said when he said that, his wife Susan, so she stood up and excused herself. Said May was just standing there kindly rocking back and forth on her heels, looking around and grinning. Well, said he kept trying to talk. But the more he talked, the more she was looking around. So he finally slammed his fist down on the table. Now, what in blazes are you looking for? Says so she just kept on a grin and said, A skillet. He told her to kindly see herself out and take a good look at her home, because it would soon be his. Well, she stormed out the door and marched back toward the house. She took a little detour in a little patch of woods there, beside of them. Said she stopped, fell to her knees, started praying. Then just leaned over on an old tree and cried till she about lost her breath. Well, after a few minutes, a hand touched her shoulder. Then she jumped, turned around and looked. It was Susan. May asked, what do you want? Didn't you get to make fun while I was there? 
said Susan looked at her and said, this little meeting right here never happened. Said she laid something wrapped in a towel right there at her feet, turned around and left. Well, May grabbed it and went on home. She got inside and uncovered and looked at it. It was a book, but she couldn't read. She said, now what good is a book to me? She figured it was just another excuse to make fun of her or something. She thought she'd just give it to that reading lady that comes around once a week. Which happened to be the next morning. Well, the next morning she got it bright and early. And after a while, here come that lady on her horse. And the lady was going to just go on by. I always throwed her hand up and waved, but she knowed May couldn't read, so she never stopped. But May flagged her down. Well, said May explained everything, the whole shebang to her. And showed her the book. Said she looked at it, and made huge eyes. And told May to hop on. Said May hopped on the horse with her, and said they rode into town like lightning, straight to the courthouse where the law was. Said she dropped May off and said, Now go in there and tell them everything and give them the book. Said she turned around and left. Said she did just that. Said she went in, looked around, found the sheriff. Handed it to him and explained everything. Said just like the ladies, he made big eyes too. Well, said he looked at her and he asked about the land survey. And it says she told him, she said, I, I don't know. I just don't know. Said daddy always handled things like that. Said I didn't even know we was supposed to do nothing like that. Said so he took a deep breath, scratched his head, and said, all right, we'll go on home. We'll, we'll see what we can get figured out. Well, as it turned out, the book was a record of old man Clark's dirty business deals and who'd paid him off, things like that. He was arrested the very next day, and the sheriff had me come down too, and he did point out that the land taxes hadn't been paid since her daddy had passed. Said it belonged to the county now. And again, she fell to her knees crying and praying. Said old man Clark standing there behind the bar and said he was there and started just laughing and everything else. But said his laughs kind of abruptly stopped when the book lady and the lady maid saved with a skillet walked in. They were sisters. And they had went around to all the other women and they may have helped over the years with the skillet and told them what was going on and news spread like wildfire. Said every woman that was around the area, even some men folk too, pitched in to help save the place that knew her daddy and things like that. Said all the women had pitched in money they had saved, what few pennies here and there and stuff, dollars. Anything they could make overnight, things like that, save. Well, said they had enough, they paid the taxes up. She even had a little bit left over, which May gave to the church, because she said that the Lord works in a mysterious way, and he saved her. Now, old May, I reckon, met a man named Bill in church one day, not long after that. Said they just kind of hit it off. He started visiting regularly. Soon they got married. Had two youngins. Tanya says one, whom was my daddy. Grandmama May says she never needed a skillet for Pa Bill, but she always seemed to keep one handy. <laughs> Tanya says Grandmama passed many, many years ago. But when I got married, and when my daughters got married, it's now a tradition to gift the ladies a cast iron skillet with me engraved in it. And it just goes to show you folks, like I always say, you can't always see the wings on an angel.